So my work is focused on creating new human experiences, and I do that by combining the interactive properties of computers with sort of the physical qualities of materials. Uh, but before I show you my work, I would like to tell you a little bit about how I got into this stuff. Um, I'm originally from Brazil, I was born in Brazil, and uh, as a kid, I really liked to make things with my hands. And the way that I started getting to computers is that I um, it was through a guitar teacher. Uh, when I was a kid, I, I, I met this guitar teacher who was a bit of a nerd, and he was obsessed about computers, and he spent all his free time writing this really cool music software in this old XT machine. So rather than teaching me how to play the guitar, he taught me how to program. And I loved media as a kid, and programming was really fun, and it was a really amazing way for me to make media interactive. Um, so, but when it came time for me to go to undergrad and, and go to school, um, I couldn't really see myself sitting in front of this box all day long, and I was like, I have to do something else. And I ended up going to film school, and film is really interesting. It's this really powerful uh, medium. It's this really powerful experience that really involves people into it. And I made a really, a lot of really bad movies in film school. <laughs> and watching those movies, I couldn't really see myself as being part of them. Like they felt somehow disconnected and kind of outside of me. And very soon, I found myself more interested in making the camera than making the actual movies themselves. Um, so I went back to sort of my old world and started teaching myself programming again and taught myself electronics. And so this is one of the first things that I did with electronics. It's this project called the Art O Meter. Um, and what it does is it measures the quality of an artwork. Um, <laughs> and the way it does that is uh, you, it's a box, you put it right under a painting, and it has this little sensor that measures how much time people spend in front of it. And it compares the total amount of exhibition of a work with the total amount of time somebody has spent in front of it. And so if you have spent a lot of time, it's going to say, oh, this is a great work. But if nobody has seen or spent any time in front of it, it's going to say, this is really bad. Um, and the Aramid is a really tough critic. It, it speaks in French. Um, and <laughs> it was, what was really interesting about this work is that um, People had this very polar reaction to it. Some people would come to me and be like, this is terrible, you can't make art something objective, it doesn't make any sense. Of course it doesn't. Um, and then some other people would come to me and be like, this is amazing, I'm so happy you did this. Like Now finally I can tell good art from bad art. To create this experience where just by the act of viewing something, you can actually change it. So after that, um, a friend of mine, Steve Helsing, and I got a commission to make a piece that would change the gallery space. Um, and normally galleries are these really like white, big open rooms with frames hanging on the walls, um, with a lot of space in between. So we decided to fill up the space with a whole lot of air. Um, we created this uh, robotic balloons that are about five feet long. They're these big creatures. Um, and they're equipped with sensors and actuators on all sides. And we program them to behave like gas molecules. So they sort of move randomly. And eventually, they find an obstacle and kind of move away from them very quickly. Uh, and what was really interesting about this work to me is that it really allowed you to see how the air flowed in the room. Like you really could see the air moving around through these balloons. And you also became part of it. You, you kind of almost wanted the balloons in the space. It was this really immersive experience, which I think was very different from the, the kind of problems I was encountering with films and computers. Um, so I think at that point, like I realized that I kind of was getting to something that was what I wanted to do. Um, I realized I had to break computers out of the box uh, and really make them physical, combine them with the materials that are all around us. So this is one of the first projects that I did in this vein. Um, I, people normally think of papers as something that's like, like when we talk about electronic papers, right? You think about PDFs and emails and things like that. Uh, and paper, paper has been this really important medium for transmitting uh, information, for storing it for the longest time. So I was trying to figure out how could I combine paper with this kind of digital information stuff that's happening now. So I went on to learn how to make paper. Uh, I don't know if you know how it's made, but normally you have this big vat of water, and you break fibers into it. Um, then you scoop it with a screen, so some of the water gets sort of comes out. And then you squeeze the sheet of paper against felt so that it can sort of soak the water and dry. Um, and at this point in the process, there's something really cool, is that you can put objects in the sheet of paper, and you can put another sheet on top and let them dry together. And the electronics kind of become part of the sheet of paper. You, you get this integrated paper sheet that's electronic. Uh, so this is an example of like silk screening. So I did a lot of like, put a lot of conductive inks and resistive inks onto the sheets of paper. Um, this is an example of a band sensor uh, that allows you to measure how somebody's flipping the pages of a book. This 
This is a paper speaker. So it plays sounds, but it feels like paper. And what's really interesting too with this is that you can actually bend the sheet of paper and change the sound. Um, this is a combination of a, of a computer the screens do, right? They sort of like this little light emitting displays. But in this case, it also has the feel and texture quality of paper. And uh, when, I, when I came to the Media Lab, I was trying to apply some of these material techniques that I was working on to spaces, like really looking at how can we put computers into our walls and floors and furniture. So I created shutters, which is a curtain that's made out of felt and has these little flaps um, that, that can change shape and they can move to open and close. And that way they can control lighting and ventilation in a room. Uh, but also by doing that, they function as a kinetic display because now we have a grid of pixels that can change and open. Uh, and you can not only create a display that's on the curtain, but you can also create a display that's made out of shadows. And you can see here how it's just made out of fabric. There's no, there are no motors in it. They're just actuators that are integrated into the material itself. And about two years ago, um, Jamie Ziegelbaum, a friend of mine and I, got this award and a commission to make a new piece about what we, we thought represented the future of design. Um, and for a lot of people, when you talk about computers, they think about the sort of rectangular grids, right? There's a grid of little lights that blink and keyboards. Um, and for us, computers represented this kind of physicality, you know, really taking them out of the screen. So what we did is we, we made this piece called 6 by 480 uh, where we made this physical pixels where we could literally take them out of the screen and put them onto spaces. Uh, and this is how it works. So, so the physicality that this, this piece created is really interesting. So people, when we install this, people normally walk up to it, and they start moving these light blocks around without quite knowing why. It's, I find it really bizarre, actually. Somebody would walk up to something and just start moving it. Uh, but slowly as you do that, you start, people start writing text, and they start creating image and animation patterns. And it's kind of a weird form of digital graffiti, uh, where the medium you're using is physical, and you can rearrange it, but it has these digital properties to it. And a lot of the behaviors that we've experienced showing this are things that we didn't even quite expect. Uh, this is a show that we had at the, um, at the Corcoran Gallery. We, had, we just showed this as part of a big event. And uh, there was a group of 10 teachers that came by to see the exhibit, and they tried to clone colors. So if you touch two of them, you can clone colors across them through your body. And they tried to hold hands together and get that to happen across 10 different people, which they could. They managed to make it happen. Uh, and it was really fun to watch this, because normally when you go to a museum like this, you're not even allowed to touch anything. And all of a sudden you have 10 people holding hands and touching their bodies against this thing and making it do something. Um, this is something we're not expecting as well. You can actually create these masks with your body uh, by blocking the infrared light. <laughs> and you can create this sort of digital silhouette. Before I got accustomed to pixels being this kind of square things that you see on LCD displays, there are things like pointillism and halftone printing. So we extended this piece into this other one called Resolution, where we experimented with circular pixels to see what kinds of things people could create. Um, we also spent a lot of time working more on the aggregate behavior, so it actually would have control over a lot of pixels at the same time. And in this case, you can really paint them with light, uh, which create really interesting patterns.
cool. Um, so as, as an artist and a designer, I, I find it really important for me to work with the materials of our time. Um, so I wanted to show a little bit of the kinds of things that we do and how we do them so you understand where this stuff comes from. Um, so normally we come up with a concept, some crazy idea, we sketch it out on paper and we try different form factors for it. Um, then we 3D print it and we do that over and over again so we can actually hold those objects in our hands and see how they feel and, and like how good is it to hold this? Does it feel right? Does it have the right edges and shape? Uh, we design our own, our own electronics um, and we program and test electronics and debug and do that over and over again. Uh, once we're done with the shape, we injection mold it, uh, so we can make lots of it. And injection molding is kind of the traditional technique for making a lot of stuff in the consumer electronics industry. Uh, and then when we have all the parts, we bring all of them to our studio and we assemble everything by hand ourselves. So there's this really interesting combination of craft with manufacturing that happens in this work. Um, so what next? Um, I think computers have really changed the way that we make things uh, and they have created new forms of communication and expression. And I think it's really important for artists and designers to play a crucial role in this process, to really sort of take hold of technology and, and create it, innovate the technology so that we can create environments and spaces that kind of move away from keyboards and screens and are really more engaged with their bodies and, and really take advantage of all of our senses. Thank you.